Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and this is part one of what will probably be a two-part series on using Microsoft Planner. Let's go ahead and get started. Microsoft Planner is a web-based application. There are apps that you can download for your devices, but you'll primarily use it from the browser. To access it, you will need a valid Office 365 account, and you'll go to Office 365 and click the waffle icon here at the top left side. Scroll down until you find the Planner icon, and when you click that, that will bring you to the Planner application. You can just link directly to it by going to tasks.office.com. If you've ever heard the term Agile, you probably know it came from the software development world. Software developers have their own set of Agile tools. They use technologies like GitHub or Visual Studio Team Services or any number of other solutions. You can, as a developer, use Planner, but I actually think this is best suited for small teams that don't need project management rigor, but they do need to have some ability to assign tasks to people and keep track and visualize the project. So what would this be ideal for? Well, we're gonna start by creating a new plan, and I'm gonna click the new plan icon here, and I'm going to create this plan for a new product launch. So this will be the marketing department of an organization who is going to release a new product. So I'm just going to say new product launch. And you can see that when I do this, Planner is going to allow me to create a title for it, the plan name, but it's also going to create a group email address. So people that are on the project can actually email new product launch at yourcompanyname.com. When it says make this public, what this is actually saying is make it public to anyone that has Office 365 in your account. So for example, if I say make this public, this does not mean anyone on Google can search for it and find it. It means anyone in my organization can see it. You can also add a description so people understand what this project is for. And go ahead and click create plan. As you can see, once the project is created, Planner creates this little tile here and it shows a color for your project. And it says NP for me because it stands for new product launch. So it just took the N and the P from new product launch. It also puts it down here underneath all plans. And you might have a whole bunch of plans here. Maybe you have multiple product launches and other activities that you manage on a regular basis. If you want, you can always put this project into a favorites list. This way you don't get lost with all the other plans that you have. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now let's take a look at the website that we have here. Along the top, we have board, charts, notebook, and then these uh, three dots here, this context menu. And as you can see, there's more that we can do. We can access a calendar, manage members, files, a notebook, and much more. Over on the right-hand side, we can group things. You can see we can group by various buckets, assigned to, and progress. Right now we're looking at progress, and that's the default board that gets displayed. And this screen right here is a board. Up here on the top right, you can add members. So you can just go ahead and type someone else's email address here, and they need to be within your organization, within your Office 365 account. But when you do that, they'll be added to your project and they'll receive an email. By the way, I received an email introducing me to this site and it gave me a link to the site as well. Let's go ahead and start adding some content to our project. Now what we have here is a add a task card that's showing up here. And if I just click this little close icon, you can see the board's empty. There are no tasks assigned in the project yet. So what you do is you just press the plus icon here underneath any one of the buckets. Usually you're starting with not started. If your project is in progress, maybe you'll go ahead and add some tasks here. But let's just create a few tasks and I'm gonna show you how quickly you can enter them. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a new brochure. 
and press the Enter key on your keyboard. The next thing that we might do is plan a trade event and press Enter on the keyboard. As you can see, it happens very quickly and this Add a Task item always appears, making it very easy for me to add something new. Now, so far we've just added some tasks to the board and we haven't really done too much with them. But let's go ahead and do something a little bit more advanced here. Here we're going to create an in-store display. So this, ha this happens to be a new product that we're launching and it's going to be sold in stores. So we want to have a display for that. So what we can do is come down here to set a due date. Now here is where we can actually pick from a date picker and say when we want that new in-store display to be completed. And we'll just click a date here. And you can see now it's showing that date. Now notice over here on the left-hand side, I don't have any tasks, any tasks assigned to me. That's because so far when I've added these tasks, no one's been assigned. The whole idea here is that we're listing off everything that's in our backlog, our list of things that need to get done, but it doesn't necessarily mean anyone's been assigned to date. So let's go ahead and assign someone to the task. Here you can type someone's email address. Again, they need to be in your Office 365 plan, or you can just go ahead and select someone from the list of members. I'm gonna go ahead and choose myself. Now here's a little quirk with this user interface. Sometimes when you click a name, it doesn't go away. And it's really hard to get it to go away. So what you wanna do is just click on the task name up here and that kind of gets rid of the dialogue to enter a date or enter a name. Now I'm gonna click Add Task, and what you can see is now I have a task assigned to me over here on the left-hand side of the pane. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that just to see what it looks like from the user's perspective. As you can see, I also have a board and it says Not Started, In Progress, and Completed. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to work with your own tasks. So for now, we're going to head back to the project plan itself. Now, let's say that we are managing this project and we're in a conference call and we're talking about what's going on with the project. Well, one thing that you might want to do is find out what's going on with this creation of the in-store display. So the project manager might say, where are things at with that? Well, I just say, I'm getting started with it. So you could just drag and drop this into the in-progress bucket. Of course, I was assigned to this task, so I could have done that in the My Tasks area as well. Now, this plan a trade event might already be done. And this is where I wanna point out, as I move over any task, you'll see these checkboxes appear. And so when you click the checkbox, it naturally moves over here to the completed bucket. And you can see it's strike through, it has text with a strike through on it, it has a checkbox. And if at some point we say, well, this really isn't done, we can just click the mark incomplete and it will move it back to the not started bucket. Of course, if we want, we can just drag and drop this over here to the completed bucket ourselves and you can see the same exact thing happens. Well, thank you for watching this free video on YouTube. If you like it, I would really appreciate it if you press that subscribe button and the like button. It's incredibly helpful and it keeps the content free. Thanks and I'll catch you in another video.